on the six screens Telenetwork, earning the reputation of giving all the right ingredients, uninhibited, and exposing the hard, cold facts about the Watchtower Society. Well, hello everyone and welcome in once again to a rockin' awesome Saturday night up here at the Six Screens. We're so glad that you're joining us tonight. And it's been amazing, friends. More and more people have been coming in, listening and watching the program on YouTube and Facebook and a number of other platforms as well. So we welcome you in. If you're listening into the Six Screens for the first time tonight, if you're a PIMO or if you're PIMQ, thank you for coming in. We know there's a lot of people leaving the Watchtower and we're so happy to see that. So just hang in here with us and we will be introducing you to Anne-Marie. Uh, hello, Anne-Marie. Hold on one second. Uh, hello, Anne-Marie. Hello, Anne-Marie. Yeah, okay. Well, you, you, you dial me on my regular phone. You got to go on the, on the regular, on the other line. No. Yeah, go on the other line. Yeah, yeah. All right, we'll just wait for Anne Marie. She dialed the wrong number, but you can be, be with us. She's a former Jehovah's Witness out of uh, California. And uh, hey, when you have a live program, things happen. But she'll be right back in here with us. She uh, somehow dialed the, uh, the wrong number. So she'll come right back in. So don't you guys worry. Boy, I'll tell you what, though, I, I am one happy camper tonight. <clears throat> you guys, I know I say that every week, but I am. I, I am seeing so many people leaving the watch hour. It's unbelievable. It's just to, to the point that uh, they, they are hemorrhaging. Uh, they, they're on life support. There's no ads, ifs, or buts about it. And uh, they, uh, I don't believe they're going to be around much, much longer. So we'll get Anne Marie in here very shortly. She uh, somehow dialed up the reg, my telephone, my cell phone number. And she should have been dialing up the, uh, the number to the, uh, to the six screen to radio network. So I hope you guys are all doing good out there. Boy, in fact, hold on one second. Yes, Anne Marie. Uh, Anne Marie, you got to dial the uh, 727 uh, number. You're dialing the wrong number. So we'll get Anne Marie in. That's the first time that happened. I'm not sure why. <laughs> Anne Marie is usually right on the ball, and I'm not sure what happened. Uh, she is using a different phone tonight. Maybe, maybe that made. Uh, uh, a little bit of a problem for her. But anyway, she has a program called Touch by the Tentacles of the Watchtower. And she gets a lot of people to call in and give comments on some of the thoughts that she brings up. So she'll be with us here just momentarily. But you know, I wanted to take the time to do well, I think she's on here with us now. Hello, Anne Marie. I see you with us. Hit star. Hi, Greg. There you are. Yeah. Yeah, right. I think you were, you were dialing my cell phone rather than the number to the uh, conference call. I, I apologize. I kept hitting six screens and I kept getting stupid stuff. I am so sorry. Yeah, that's all right. I'll forgive you. Right, I'm doing fine. <laughs> Everything's moving forward. We've got a big audience coming in already, Emery. The that's just dying to hear what you have to say tonight. So tell the audience what you're going to be talking about. Well, I would like to talk about the subject of courage. Courage, I realized a couple days ago, is something that every single one of us, to one degree or another, all share in coming out and leaving and surviving after the watchtower. Courage is something that we don't ever seem to acknowledge or talk about very much. So that's it, my brother. Well, we're looking forward to it. I mean, it does. Uh, actually, do you think, Amory, the watchtower wants you to be a courageous person? What do you think about that? <laughs> My brother, they don't even want you to think for yourself. They don't want you to get an education. In Anthony Morris's own words, the best. Okay, we just had a little drop off on a call there. We didn't quite get the end of that. You there? Still with us, Amory? All right. Well, she has been having some issues with her phone, so we'll um, we'll see if she can't get back on here with us. Uh, Amory, uh, can you hear us? All right. Well, we'll see what happens with Anne Marie. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, courage. I mean, that's a word that you don't really come to grips with in the Watchtower. People, they don't. They're not encouraged to have courage, are they? Because when you have courage, you have backbone, and when you have backbone, it means that you speak up against falsehoods. And that's one thing that uh, the Watchtower doesn't want you doing. So they're not going to even 
tolerate the fact that you're a courageous person in the watchtower. Well, we'll, we'll get Emory back on here with us. Uh, I do have, I do see there is some other callers calling me. I may have a backup person who might want to come and fill in for Emory. I think she's having some trouble with her phone. I, uh, are you there, Emory? I'm so sorry, Rick. All right. Yeah, my phone keeps flopping. Yeah. I apologize. We'll, 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 keep, we'll keep an eye on that phone. We'll see what happens. So we're talking about Tony Morris. You were saying something about Tony, Tony Morris and courage? Well, they don't, Watchtower doesn't want us to think for ourselves and um, or to get an education. And Tony Morris said before he walked away that the more, the better the university, the more dangerous it is. He actually said it was dangerous. And that's, I think, because when you go to school and university, especially, you are expected to think for yourself and to do your own research and to come to your own conclusions and to explain why you have come to your own conclusion. That's what going to college teaches you. So they can't have that because if you have courage and you think for yourself and you research for yourself, which of course you're not supposed to do when you're in Watchtower, then you have the courage to stand up to Watchtower and then they can't control you. And what are they going to do then, my brother? Well, yeah, just mentioning that to the audience, uh, that's one thing they would discourage. But, you know, if you have courage in, in any endeavor in life, whether it's about standing up against the watchtower or standing up for your rights, you'll do it if you have courage. But if you just, you know, peter out and go with the flow, then, you know, I'll just be all right here. That, that's not a, you're not going to feel happy in life. But I'm going to tell you something. I get the biggest adrenaline rush when I stand up against the watchtower. I know you do too, Anne-Marie. And tomorrow night, we will be protesting at the Kingdom Hall in Wilmington, Massachusetts. And, you know, when I first did that, it took a lot of courage. I have to tell you that. My heart would sink down to my shoes the first time I did it. I said, man, but I'm going to do it. And I've been doing it now for going on 16 years. And I'm going to tell you something. It is such an adrenaline rush when you can speak up and let the watchtower know or any person who's kind of lauding it over you that's doing it falsely letting them know that you mean business. So that's tomorrow night. I just want to give a little promo for that, Anne-Marie. We'll be at the Kingdom Hall. It's around 6.30 tomorrow night. If you tune into Facebook and YouTube, you'll see us there live in front of the Kingdom Hall. And we're going to have a bunch of people there. They're going to have some courage. And we're going to see what the witnesses are wearing. Are the, are the women wearing slacks? Are the men wearing ties? Do they have beards? Join us tomorrow night, Anne-Marie. Thank you for letting me make the, pro the promo. Oh, my brother, what you're doing is so incredible, and that's 6.30 Eastern Standard Time tomorrow night, Memorial Night, I assume. Yeah, I, I just kind of, I was thinking Memorial was next week, but the witnesses, that wow. it, actually nice and 14 is supposed to be April 22nd, and I... I, I I saw that. I, I thought it was in April sometime or, you know, maybe the first of April around there. But then I found out this week that, no, the memorial is being held this week at the Kingdom Hall. So they're, they're doing it a little earlier than most Christians, even though they're not Christians. But uh, they're doing it earlier than most would in that celebration. So we'll be there, Anne-Marie. And I'm, I know that many will be listening in and watching, so it'll be kind of interesting. Well, thank you, my brother. And I'm also hoping that someone there at the protest will be taking pictures of what the brothers and sisters are wearing. Because I don't know if you remember, but way back in the 50s and early 60s, I remember that the Watchtower was very clear and very adamant that the standard dress for any witness of Jehovah in the Watchtower, every man was expected to dress like a high-class lawyer, a high-class businessman, polished leather shoes, very nice creased blacks, nice button-down pure white shirt, conservative tie. Their overcoats had to look like top-notch. They had to wear a hat. All witness women were expected to dress as if they worked for a high-class lawyer. That's high heels, stylish dress, perfectly coiffed hair. And this is witness women that had to wear high heels in the ministry, walking from door to door in high heels. Remember that? Oh, yeah. In fact, uh, when I lived in Florida, and we all know it gets hot down there in the summertime, 
uh, the sisters would wear heels. Now, they weren't spiked heels. You know, they weren't like three-inch heels. But they were, high, you could call them high heels, like you say. And I, I can remember being out in service with not only my former wife, but with other sisters. And the, the tar, the hot top on the, on the, on the roads, yeah. the sidewalk was so hot, their little heels would, would, would dig into the hot top. It was unbelievable. But they had to look good. They had to look good, Amory. Exactly. So Watchtower had a very strict dress code. So I just wanted to point that out. And like I said, I'm hoping that um, people that are going to the memorial who post it on Reddit, I asked them to take pictures of the brothers and sisters in the hall because everybody was talking about, I wonder how they're going to show up with beards, no ties, open collar shirts, sports coat, maybe jeans, maybe, you know, whatever. Well, we, 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 got a, we got a professional photographer. I made sure that he would be there tomorrow night. So we have a professional photographer that's going to take some pictures you'll see posted all over YouTube and Facebook. Oh, I'm so happy to hear it, my brother. Um, my brother, I just, if I may, I wanted to wish you a happy six screen Saturday. And, you know, today is, I'm sure you know what day today is. It's March 23rd, 2024. The date of yours and Susan's 10th wedding anniversary. And I want to wish you a very happy anniversary, my brother. Well, well thank you, Susan. Now, I'm Susan. You know, Marie, thank you. You got me thinking of Susan. She's a wonderful woman. But uh, actually, it's tomorrow. It's the 24th. And so that's going to the day really fine. I thank you for acknowledging that. But it's fine. And, you know, Susan and I have been married now for going on, going on 10, 10, 10 years. And I, and I got news for you. We only had... We well, we only been married for ten years, and the fight is still going on, Anne Marie. I'm only kidding. We we love each other. We never had an argument. Susan and I, in ten years, I'm not kidding you, folks. We have never had an argument. Uh, it's been a, a good relationship. We love each other, and things are moving in the right direction. But thank you for those kind words, Anne Marie. Well, I don't know why I have you down for the 23rd of March, my brother. Have you checked with your wife? Uh, yeah, well, that's Su Susan is the 23rd of April. That's her birthday. The 23rd of April is her birthday. And I got it wrong. The 20 that's okay. I did that. It's not, it's not a big thing. You, you, you worry too much. You, you, you let little things in life bother you. Don't, don't let that happen. It doesn't matter. It's not a big thing. I'm just blessed. I'm so sorry, my brother. But I do wish you a happy anniversary. Well, I just wanted to welcome everyone in. Now, if, if I suddenly go silent, my phone drops calls, and I'm so sorry. I apologize to everyone. My husband, his truck broke down. He's up north, and he has no way to get here to give me his phone. So I'm on my really bad phone. So if I, I don't want to frustrate anybody. I want to thank you, my brother, for being so kind and understanding. Um, I wanted to talk about courage. Courage as in regard to leaving the watchtower, having the courage to walk up walk away, to stand up to Watchtower, to speak out about Watchtower, the courage to uh, investigate, the courage to do whatever you know you need in your heart to do, even at the risk of losing your friends and your family, of being called a wicked apostate, of being shunned, of having your own child, your own daughter, your own son, your own mother, your own grandchild walk right past you with their nose up in the air as if you don't exist. Any of us and all of us who have endured any of this, we have a measure of courage. And just real quick, I wanted to uh, check in with Auntie Google on the actual definition of courage. And I found some interesting little uh, bits here. One is courage is the ability to do something even though you're scared to death to do it. And I think all of us know that feeling when it comes to Watchtower or leaving Watchtower or questioning Watchtower. It's also a mental or moral strength to venture, to persevere, and to withstand danger, to stand up to fear or difficulty. It's being brave, fearless, etc. Being Having courage recurs to the quality of the spirit. Courage allows one to face extreme dangers. This isn't just war. This is emotional and mental danger because who wants to face losing the most precious and closest thing to you? 
your close friends and family. Courage allows you to face all these dangers and difficulties. It also means courage, having the mental or moral strength to keep going, to keep putting one foot in front of the other. Courage allows you to withstand the fear that is usually constant and severe. Courage helps one to go with one's convictions. What you know in your heart, in your mind, is the right thing to do. You guys know the old adage, go along to get along? That's what a lot of people in Watchtower do. Courage is the choice. Courage is a choice. And it is the choice and the willingness no matter how scared you are, to confront the pain, the danger, and the uncertainty. And I think of all of the young ones, uh, the young Jehovah's Witnesses, young men, maybe 15, 16, 17, 18, young Jehovah's Witnesses who realized they couldn't do it anymore. They just had to get out. And they told their parents, and what happened? Thousands of young Jehovah's Witnesses were thrown out of their own homes and disowned by their family. Many to just live in the street or to make do the best they could. Now, I'm hoping that as a side thought, everyone, if they are interested about these young ones being thrown out, there is on YouTube a documentary called Disfellowship, and it is heart-wrenching as each one tells a story of how their family threw them out, how they were disowned, and how they managed to survive. It's called This Fellowship. The documentary is still on YouTube. Courage is the quality of one's mind or spirit that enables a person to face difficulty regardless of the pain or consequences. Imagine that. Regardless of the pain or consequences, we strive to do the right thing. As it said before, courage is a choice. Courageous people, that's you, Rick, that's Susan, that's all of us here. Courageous people do and say what they feel in their heart, what they think is right, despite the repercussions. Again, courage is a choice. How many in the watchtower down deep in their heart know something is wrong, but the thought of even thinking about it or acknowledging it or, or researching it scares them so bad they'd like to stay in their little watchtower fantasy bubble. Courage may not move mountains. We know it doesn't. Courage may not move mountains, but it can help you to learn how to climb. And again, that's just one step at a time. So, anybody want to comment or anything before my mouth keeps on going? About the star six, if anybody has a thought. Yeah, hi, this is Donald from Texas here. Hi, Donald from Texas. How are you? Yeah. I'm great. great. I never have been a Joe's Witness. I studied with him very briefly back in the early 1990s. But over the years that I've watched the organization do stuff, and of course now with the internet going on, it totally amazes me how they treat people. You know, like you said, with the throwing kids out of their homes just because they're not part of some dead gum religion. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, if you're a Christian, which I am, or if anybody here is a Christian, you know that's not Christ like. To throw your to throw your own kids out just because they don't believe in the governing body. Very well said, Donald, and I really appreciate that. It I cringe. I literally get a knot in my stomach and I cringe when someone refers to the Watchtower organization members as Christians. They are not Christians. They don't follow Christ. They don't keep to his word. They don't obey him. They don't listen to his voice. They don't partake of what he said in John chapter 6, starting in maybe, I don't know, verse 35, 50. I mean, he went on and on about how you must take of his body and drink of his blood or else you have no life in you. And yet, what do they do every year? 
They say it's the most important day of the year to come together simply to take the glass of wine representing the blood of our Lord, look at it, and pass it on. We don't need your blood. We can earn our own righteousness. We can earn our own forgiveness. Taking the bread that symbolizes Christ's sinless body, looking at it, passing it off. We don't need your body either. What you did for us, thank you. That was all very well and fine. But we, through the governing body and through our obedience and all our great works, we can earn for ourselves a right to standing before God and earn the right to live forever. Well, the hope anyway. But if they just literally come together to reject the sacrifice of Christ that is spitting in the face of our Lord, in my opinion. They are spitting in his face as he lay dying on the cross for us. Of course, they don't do it knowingly. They have been terribly deceived. Donald, I'm sorry I interrupted you. Go ahead, my brother. And I'd also go back on the Kurdish thing, too. You know, there's a lot of people that do have the courage to stand up to watch Tamar right in the kingdom halls. I mean, I've seen videos of, you know, what they call kingdom hall crashes. And, you know, people stand up and they speak out against the, the CSA stuff, their own abuse that they've had, uh, all kinds of stuff. And, of course, you know, as you see on these videos with people doing that, but watch out people are trying to speak over them telling, you know, whatever, but, and then, of course, they get thrown out of the kingdom hall also, but it's just, it's just a bad religion all the way around. I mean, to, to, to deny your people education, to deny, I mean, even children, you know, I mean, they, they, if you watch the Caleb and Sophia videos, which I'm sure you've seen them, um, there's one of those videos where the Sophia, I think, tells a girl that oh, I can, we can no longer be friends because basically what she's saying through that is, you're not a Jehovah's Witness. And, and see, that to me, that's just evil. I mean, that's just satanic. Of course it is. You're so right, Donald, because the governing body, they also call themselves a faithful slave. They basically set themselves up to their members as being in the place of Christ because they can't go to Christ and accept him as our Savior and obey him and listen to him or pray to him or follow him. But they have to look to the governing body. As one person on Reddit commented, she said, you know, there will come a time when they will get rid of Jehovah and Jesus altogether and we'll just pray to the governing body directly. And that sounds tongue-in-cheek, but you know, really, how far away are we from that? Hey, yeah, I know. But yeah, you know, they discourage your courage. They, they don't want you to have courage, like you said earlier. That they don't want you to think for yourself. They don't want you to do anything except for... Well, as I heard someone on a video put it the other day, Joe's witnesses are children. And what they meant by that was they're children because they have to follow their daddy, the governing body. And they have no they don't think of themselves like you said. They they have no they basically have no rights to anything. I mean all they can do is serve watchtower, go to meetings and not have fun. I mean kids in school, I feel sorry for the kids in school because yeah, you get young kids. You know that Joe's Witness kids want, they want to celebrate their birthdays and want to be involved in a class birthday party and stuff, but no, they can't sit on the side because I'm a Jehovah's Witness and I'm, I'm not allowed to have fun. Exactly. That's so sad. I don't know why. The, the, or, or they would probably be thinking, I have to wear my skirt and suit all day long and I have to act like a business person and go door to door and, and not play video games and not associate with kids in school and not join track or play football or none of that stuff. It's just go to school, come home, do your homework, do your watchtower study, which to me, <clears throat> they should be studying the Bible, not the watchtower. You're so right. And, you know, Donald, I have to give you credit for not falling for the Watchtowers cult recruiters because most people did. My mother did. I did. 
so many of us were absolutely captivated by the smooth reasoning. And we weren't studying the Bible. We were studying their cult literature, and they referred to their cult literature as Bible study aids. This helps you to understand God's Word better because it discusses subjects, and then we look up the scriptures as relates to the subject. So we were, as those who fell for it, not you, we were never thinking that we were in any danger because we trusted that we were being taught the truth. And that Bible, the Bible they said they were representing was being held up as their ultimate spiritual, you know, um, whatever judgment authority, if you will. But it was the complete opposite. It was the complete opposite. Is there anything you would like to add, Donald? The only thing I like to say is, you know, that, you know, the religion is extremely diabolically evil and to wealth someone's courage is to me an evil practice because there's nothing wrong with having courage. There's nothing wrong with standing up for yourself. There's nothing wrong with thinking for yourself. I mean, you have to think for yourself. If you don't, you know, nobody's going to do it for you, of course, in this case, Watch Tower does it for them, but, but yeah, I mean, I just, like, I would be right along with you, just encouraging people to, you know, take courage and do what they want to do. Go to school if you want. You know, join a club, join a dance class or something, or just get out and enjoy life and not be so bogged down with watchtower stuff. Yeah. You know, it's, um, I don't know if it's first or second Corinthians, but in chapter 13, after, um, Paul talks about love is this and love is that, I love what Paul said when he said, when I was a babe, a little tiny boy, I had the traits of a babe. And the traits of a little tiny boy, just imagine, you know, you listen to your mom, you listen to your dad, you listen to what your grandparents tell you, your big brothers and your big brother, your sisters tell you, you dress the way you're told, you believe as you're told, you behave as you're told, and and you, you have your taught manners, you do as you are taught. But then Paul said, but now, but now that I have become a man, an adult, He has put away the traits of a babe. So he's no longer looking to other people outside himself to tell him what's right and wrong, to tell him what to believe, to tell him how to think, how to behave, what religion to belong to, who to associate, who not to associate with. He said, now that I have become a man, I have put away the traits of a babe. And we know that God did not give us a brain to shut it off. No, uh, wouldn't that be interesting? Go ahead. Yeah. And you, you can't, you know, you're right, you know, God gave us that brain to use, and yet Watchtower doesn't want people to really use it. It's like they say, you know, don't do research because we've done it for you. Well, <laughs> yeah, but the problem with their research is they they misquote people. I mean, whatever, if they try to quote a scholar, you know how they do, they misquote them. Or they don't. Sometimes they don't mention facts. They might mention a fact, but they won't give the details of the fact. Like, let's say, well, certain researchers or certain. They don't mention researchers' names. They just say, well, you know, whatever, because they're afraid to, you know, because they know they're lying. They know that they're misquoting, and that's just to me the whole thing is. Well, it's just evil. It's just it's it's not Christian, like you said. It's nowhere near Christianity at all. No, it's not. And you know, after they the Watchtower announced the 1975 Armageddon prophecy at their um, district convention, God Sons of Liberty, in 1966. Two years later, after hearing nothing but Armageddon, Armageddon, better be on the alert for Armageddon, it could come any time. You know, two years of it having drummed into our heads in almost every day, in every way, they came out with a book, The Truth That Leads to Eternal Life. It was the first what they called little teaching books, about 199 pages, 
And the second chapter, this is just will blow people away, witnesses, if they would just look it up. The second chapter of that book is entitled, Why It Is Wise to Examine Your Religion. Imagine that. The Watchtower told everybody and even spent an entire chapter explaining why it is wise to examine your religion. Didn't Paul praise the Bereans? Uh, Acts 17, 11, Paul praised the Bereans, not just for accepting the good news about the Christ that he was preaching, but he was actually praising them because they weren't thinking for themselves. They were researching what they had been taught for themselves. He said he was very proud of them because they were examining scriptures daily as to whether these things were so. Can you imagine a dedicated Watchtower member sitting in the Kingdom Hall, hearing something in the Watchtower study or something that a brother said in a talk at an assembly or whatever, and they're busy checking it out according to the scriptures? If anybody found out what they were doing, they would be hauled in the back room. Their loyalty to the governing body would be deeply challenged, and they probably would be labeled an apostate. Because you have to deny what you learn. It's scary. I'm so glad you didn't get caught up in that. And at least the Bereans took the courage to study those, to to do, because they knew, you know, they knew that, hey, we know what Paul is saying, but we want to make sure that what he is saying is true. And and so that's why he was praising them. Because, you know, he he knew they weren't trying to condemn him or anything, but he knew that by them checking on his, his information to see that it is factual, by using the Bible, he commended them for it. And, yeah, if you were in KW and you were doing that, if you were sitting in, sitting in the kingdom hall, on your phone checking different websites and facts and someone saw that, yeah, you would be in that you would be in the back room faster than you could say Jack Rabbit. I mean you would be like, Okay, uh come on, sir, come on man. You gotta go back we gotta go to the back room, we gotta talk, you know. <laughs> yes. And it didn't mean any disrespect to Paul and he didn't take it as a disrespect. But anyone in authority with the Watchtower organization would absolutely see it as a form of gross disrespect if any witness wanted to check out what they were being taught in the magazines or from the podium. Absolutely. Because they can't have anybody questioning them. Automatically, they go to, are you an apostate? Have you been talking to apostates? Have you been looking at apostate sites? (laughs) Like an apostate is such a terrible thing. Yeah, right. It seems like everybody to them is an apostate. There, there again, there again, that kind of blocks your courage because you know you're you're told, well, don't do this, don't do that, and that just keeps you from doing what you want to do. And exactly. I don't know, it just seems like I'm, yeah. I know, I'm glad I never did go fully through with it. But at the time, I studied with them. I was using; they were using the you can live forever in Paradise on Earth book. And what brought me out of the whole thing was when I'm okay, let me I'm legally blind. I used to live in Houston. And at the apartment complex where I lived at, we I had a friend named Anna Maria and she wasn't a Jones witness. And we were walking to the store um one day and just so happened a JW sister happened to see me walking with her and yeah. the next time that she picked me up to go to the kingdom hall, she told me that that was bad association. Oh, I knew not. I knew, yeah, because the woman was at Anna Maria wasn't a Joe's witness. So I kind of thought, okay, this does not sound good at all. I mean, so I basically backed out of it. I didn't, you know, I I didn't continue with the study. And I'm glad I didn't. Because who knows where I would have been if I continued. Yeah, I, I I just worry. Have you ever heard of the book, A Wrinkle in Time? I know it might be yeah, crazy if you've never. Oh, okay, did you read it? No, I haven't. 
okay, well, they go to this horrible planet that is completely ruled by evil, and all of the people are under complete control by it, which is basically a huge brain that runs everybody, and you can't even try to go against it because they torture you. But anyway, when you try to go, it's called going into it. You think you can breathe and you think you, but it's like getting sucked into the watchtower. It's just like going deeper into it. And only anybody who's really read that book would totally get the analogy. It is a frightening thing. It is a frightening thing because you don't feel like your brain is being taken over. It would tell this person, oh, all of your worries would just melt away. All of your questions would just melt away. You would feel so happy and free. Yeah, because you're under their hypnotic spell. That's the yeah. way Watchtower is. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah I agree, totally. And can, can I ask a question? This is, um. Apostle Babe, Linda James. Hey, Linda. Hi. Um, Donald, are you an author yourself? Do you write? I, I, I have written a book on the Jehovah's Witnesses called A North Korean Regime in the United States. Yeah, I thought that. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. And that you put that together very well. Um, I appreciate you very much. much. Yeah. And, and right. Uh, Oh, I can tell, I can tell. And we, I'm here for you through this show to support you. If the phone drops, oh, I'll know I'm a, I'm Linda, a thank the you. Yeah. So when you drop, just know the show will go on. <laughs> I didn't want to, Linda, I, I just love you. I adore you. you are, I did not want to bother you. And I thought that poor woman has come through for me so many times. But, you know, my phone dropped the call four times just in the beginning of the six screen. Four times. Ridiculous. There's no warning. Wow. You're so wonderful. So thank you. Thank you for pointing out that I didn't know Donald was an author. I bought his book, and it's just amazing. I recommend it. And, and you can tell me. And Dr. and I've been and I think he oh, wow. of, um, I want to be a sixth, you know, I have a spice. I want to say he has even a sixth. There, he's saying he's legally blind. There's something heightened in the other senses. Whatever that is, he's got it going on. His book is amazing, and I recommend it to anybody. And what's the name of this book? It's called a North Korean regime in the United States, an in-depth look into the diabolical religion of Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh, good gracious. We're going to have to write that down. Oh! <laughs> wow. But it's true. true. Uh, I, uh, it's not on Kindle or anything. It's not a Kindle book. It's, a, it's, an, it's, it's written in HTML, so it's, a, it's an HTML-based book, but send you, I can send you a copy of it. Um, You're so sweet. Way. I never, okay. I got Thank to, you. To, you um, I got to PayPal, and PayPal went, wait a minute here, just simply because of the title. This is kind of odd, you know, like not my normal thing that I buy. So I sent them the information that I got from them, which is basically um, introducing the book and what it's about, which is, which is a certain link. And then they went ahead and paid paid it, you know. But Donald, bless his heart, I let him know that, gosh, I'm, I, I, I could get it. He went ahead and sent it to me anyway. <laughs> yeah. Aww. Donald, you know, are you still with us? Donald, yeah. are you still with us? Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, yeah. thank you. Are you happy Linda came on? My goodness. Uh, yeah, I can, I, I can send it to you. Um, I just have to get, um, if you can send me at my uh, an email, uh, I, I guess I can get my email address over the phone here, can I? You can do what you want. Just be cognizant that you might have the wrong person hear it, and maybe they might send you a, a not nice email. You never know. 
But, um, yeah. you know, I can't really do that right now. I'm kind of losing my train of thought, which is not very easy. I don't have the most stable tracks, you understand. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm so happy for Linda. Linda's like my backup strong woman. <laughs> But um, yeah, well, you know, Linda, you could you could you could send it to her if you have her email that she could send it to her. Okay, thank you. And yeah. one more thing oh, I wanted to mention, though. Oh, thank you. That's very cool, actually, um, because it really stuff. Don't <laughs> you know you you own the copyright and everything. So when you talk when you started this song called Donald, and you were talking about those that did what we call Kingdom Hall crashes, um. That you know was around 2016, 2017, and and it was there was a time for that. But even those that have done Kingdom Hall crashes, meaning shown up and maybe said a few words, maybe partook of the the wine and the and the bread, basically boldly courage using their courage to partake, like Jesus said, keep doing this in remembrance of me. So they were basically yeah. making courageous statement, but. Many of them today have said, this is not a time for that. Since we, there was Germany, since the shooting in Germany and, and in Colorado, there was a bombing, okay? Um, and a yeah. suicide. Then in, in, in Haiti, there was a, a, a wicked bombing. This is not the time for, you know, many of those that, you know, shown, you know, have videos and stuff. This is not a time for Kingdom Hall crashes. Even though I agree with you, that was a very, very courageous stand. But but many of the activists have chosen not to. It's just because of the things that have shown up lately of the last couple yeah. of years. Yeah, it's kind of changed. And so, yeah, I think, you know, there was time for that. But now, now things are different. But of course, now with Watchtower being exposed with all the changes that they're doing, all because of them pretty much losing their court case in Norway, that. That 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 that's proof enough right there that they're not a, they're not a true religion because I can't remember which governing body member it was that said that they would never change their stance on this fellowship but already they're starting to change of that uh -huh. that was a helper of the governing body and it was yeah. shortly after the 2017 protest that a, a few of the, those people that were known for Kingdom Hall crashings. Um, uh, that was right about that time. And they were really, really requesting hard to get rid of the two witness rule, which is you cannot confirm any CSA activity unless there's a, there was a second witness on the scene and they had to be a second wow. witness as a Jehovah's Witness in good standing. Okay. I have, a, I have a question. I have a question about yeah. that one. If there was a second witness, if there was a second witness, wouldn't the second witnesses, wouldn't the second witnesses say, "Hey, stop! <laughs> Not watch it and continue with it." Exactly. And also, too, there's a lot of interruption to make sure a victim doesn't get to the doctors right away, because when you do get a chance to go to the doctors. And there is an examination, there's a kit. You know, DNA can be retrieved right away. That, yeah, I think it's what's called a rape kit. A second witness. That is, yeah. in, in fact, a second witness. Please keep us in listeners. So when something goes on, you know, um, the, the authorities, secular authorities have been trained much better. And how the elders have been informed and trained how to handle this situation. I put somebody in prison for going after one of my daughters. This was not a Jehovah's Witness situation whatsoever. And I never had to come up with no second witness. I handed the, the, the information over to somebody that's actually been trained. <laughs> uh, they did the investigation, not me. It was, it's, it's misplaced. The elders will say, will say that we have to do an investigation and then come up with their conclusion as if that's what they have to do before calling the authorities. It's a stall technique. Then there's another oh, yeah. stall technique. Then there's another stall technique, which pretty much either, you know, within that time, you're told not to, or it's implied not to go to the authorities because it will get you up over 
a bad name. Drag his name through the mud. Listen, we're not responsible for just all this.
And um, I haven't talked wow. to him since, and he, and he just called me twice. Uh, wow. You know, a couple hours ago, and I wasn't around to and pick up the phone, and I called him back, and my phone is still blocked by his number. This, this is cowardly. This is cowardly that to have control over your kids or vice versa with Joe and Fran and their and their um, your kids or your parents and um, or family members or whatever it may be. And and they're, they're playing with our emotions and it's not right. It's it's really wrong. And and I can't help to think that this has to do with the Jehovah's Witness doctrine changing. Um, but in no in no way, shape, or form is our relationship healthy at all in the slightest. And I don't know why he's. I I text him and then I realize that the that I'm blocked, so he's not getting. I'm like, who died? Because that's the literally the only reason why he calls me. And he and he hasn't called. He didn't even tell me when my my first my second cousin my best friend died. He didn't even. No one oh. told me I had to find out for myself. So yes, oh. uh, the Jehovah's Witness witnesses encourage coward cowardness. And and I, I um on Quora that that app that where questions and answers, um I I'm on that throwing the witnesses all the time and and the witnesses are such cowardly people they they will like ask you a question from your question and give this whole response and then disable the comments and I got so angry I'm like why do Jehovah's Witnesses think it's cowardly to you know, drop a bomb and then not debate it. And it got so much um, attention that my that the page blew up. And there's there's XJWs on it. There's witnesses on it. Everyone's fighting. <laughs> but I thought I would share the story of what happened and and uh, just how true courage stands up for Christ, stands up for what's right, and it courage is in short supply these days. Uh, you know, and um, the witnesses certainly do not pretty courageous people. Um, they're all they're all looking forward to, but at the same time terrified of persecution. But anyway, Dan Marie, I I've talked long enough, but um thanks for listening to me. <laughs> well, first of all, my dear Eric, don't ever feel you have talked long enough. You are sharing from your heart, from where you're coming from, what your experience is, what you're going through. And, you know, your your relation of experiences is entirely unique. But we all benefit from hearing it. And you take the time to call in and offer that. I would never say you said enough. You share anything and everything you feel in your heart is, is worth to share, that you want to share. You know why? Because everything I believe, everything that needs to be said on this call, I believe will be said. And you know what? The enemy doesn't want the truth spoken. Nothing about what it's really like or who did what or how we feel or what we think or how we came to know. The enemy doesn't want that on the line in the archives because there are still lost brothers and sisters that are yet to start to wake up, that have yet to got, get to the point where they want to start looking. And who knows how scared they are deep inside. Um, maybe some in Watchtower don't have any courage. Maybe they are cowards. But I think a lot of the brothers and sisters who are completely lost in the sick, twisted lives of the Watchtower cult indoctrination program, and to them, for them, it takes courage to keep going in what they think is the truth, and what they think is the only true religion, and what they've taught to believe is the only organization that is serving God and pleasing to God and they don't want to do it. They wish they could just walk away, but they really believe that Jehovah will kill me. I have to keep going no matter how hard it is. Satan's trying to get me to leave Jehovah. For them, it is courage that keeps them doing what they think is the right thing to do. So I personally yeah. don't believe that a lot of people are cowards. Um, but we don't know. I appreciate where you're coming from. I certainly see that. But when it came to the point, one sister said to me, while I was deeply indoctrinated in the organization, she looked at me and she said, you know, Anne-Marie, your deepest problem is that everybody's opinion matters so much to you. It matters so much to you that you have other people's approval. Because my self-esteem has been beat down to the ground. Most, most witnesses have been... that. It's part of our PTSD. Uh, I, I, most of us have that. Like, like when I say I'm sorry, 
all the time that comes from watchtower that comes from my parents never being good enough narcissism you know being around narcissistic religion narcissistic family members it it it, 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 it weighs on it, it weighs on you for sure um, i'll just bring out one, one one last point oh. about forum when i troll them i talked the subject was about um unconditional love and a witness's response was so disturbing to me she said we don't show unconditional love that's not what the bible teaches we're here to be judges i'm one whoa <laughs> well, what? That can't be what? Yeah. because if the bible is based on love which is my personal opinion it's <laughs> that was I mean, so convoluted and misconstrued i felt like i had an acid flashback just now all right. Said, well, we don't show unconditional love, and I'm like, well, we ain't got the fruits. Amen to that. <laughs> oh, my God. And, 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 and my, my father, hey, you know, his, his phone line is blocked, but mine's wide open. He can call me anytime he wants. I can't call him. <laughs> this is yeah. I know. I know there are a lot of team. I know there are a lot of teamos out there um, that are going through the same thing. People calling them now because of this crap that happened to us, but. Anyways, it sounds like there's someone that's trying to get through. Yeah, someone's trying to like, don't, don't leave. Don't leave. Okay, Paris, please. I'll, I'll just go put it on you and I'll keep it on. Please. Go ahead, brother. This is, this is all, you know, I was just agreeing with him about the unconditional love thing. Because from what I've seen on the videos, I've watched you all about the disfellowshipping stuff. I mean, you know, they love, from what I've heard, they love bomb you in the Kingdom Hall. Of course, when you're new, they love bomb you. But then, of course, if you do something wrong, you're the fellowship, and then everybody starts shunning you. And you know, of course, the, like he said, that Joe's witness was right. We don't show an we don't show unconditional love, but yet the Bible teaches unconditional. I mean, God said what? Yeah, I believe it's First John four eight. Even in the New World Translation, God is love, not just has a lot of love for us. He is pure love. How can we actually claim to represent God when we treat each other so horribly? Yeah. Oh, children in the streets. Yeah, you see so many people's families destroyed and everything from being disfellowshipped. I've even heard suicides even from uh, people who've been disfellowshipped committing suicide. I'm like, Wow, that's um, I, um, I personally know four people that have committed suicide that were witnesses and were disfellowshipped. Uh, yeah. my, my aunt, my wife's aunt, she killed herself. She was disfellowshipped like three or four times. Um, Don Rodericks, a uh, friend of mine, he was disfellowshipped four times, and the fifth one was coming along, and he was like, I'm out. He hung himself. Um, Jeff Bodie, he, uh, he, he was an elder. Pioneer married a sister. Um, she was raped by somebody when she was a kid, and every time they had sex, she cried. So that broke up the marriage. And then this guy found a new wife, worldly woman, great woman, died of cancer six months later, and then he killed himself for about ten years later and just had enough. Um, and then the fourth person is uh, my wife's friend, um, her mother. <laughs> she was disfellowshipped for decades, and uh, there was a note, and um, she had like. Um, I've been a drinker and got depressed and Watchtower's dogma was eating at her, that her kids were all going to die and all get and stuff like that because nobody was a witness. So she, she hung herself as well. Um, just really sad day. The witness's response to this is just like, this is what happens when you leave Jehovah. Oh, how heart that, that people's minds and hearts have been twisted to darkness. Well it's, not, well, it's not that they left Jehovah, they left the organization. No, that's what they say. They left an organization. Yeah, yeah. yeah I love it. A boy I grew up with, his name was Bobby, and he was always miserable. My His mother and my mother were very good friends in the organization. And my friend uh, and I, we grew all grew up together, her kids, my mom's kids in the organization, and us children. And I always would notice that Bobby was very quiet. He never smiled. He never seemed happy. And uh, I found out later from his mother, Mary, I was talking to her on the phone. 
and I had already decided I was going to leave, but I hadn't left yet. And she was talking about how Bobby had killed himself, shot himself in the head. But this is somebody that was very close to me. I'd known for most of my life. He was a sweet, good, good guy. And I said, oh, man, I'm so sorry that you lost your only son like that. And I will never forget her reaction. Nasty. She said, well, it was his fault. He did it to himself. Her son was so miserable that he shot his head off. And that was her reaction. Well, he did it to himself. That's what he gets. I mean, I couldn't believe it. And my my other friend, who was also a good friend of my mom, her kids and us kids were good friends. The youngest one, little Ricky, was always always out having fun, pulling pranks on each other. He was always a little goofball and sweet kid. And I found out later this woman who was a friend of my mom, she called me. We had a long conversation. And I found out two horrible things about two of the kids that I had grown up with, her kids, because her mom, the mom and my mom were good friends. So us three kids and her three kids, we all grew up together. And the little Ricky had been disfellowshipped twice because in order to cope with Watchtower, the demands, and can't do this and can't do that, and they're going to die at Armageddon, he was drinking just to survive. And he got disfellowship for the second time, and he killed himself. And I was just devastated because I noticed since he was six years old, and I asked the, his mother, her name was Chris, I, I said, well, what happened? And she said, well, I asked the brothers if they would have a service for him because she was devastated. And they told her, we're not going to have a service for him. He was out of favor with Jehovah. He was disfellowship. We can't have a, a service for an apostate. And she was just devastated. And then she told me that um, her, her child's friends, Chris's friends, asked her, when is his funeral? When's his service? Because Chris had a lot of people outside Watchtower who really loved him, but he was a sweet kid. And she told them, my church will not allow me to have a service for my son. Well, of course, they just couldn't believe it. But being good friends of Chris, they all went to their teachers. They went to their parents. They had a fundraiser, and they gathered up enough money to hire um, one of those places where you can have a memorial service, got the casket. I don't even know how much money they raised, but they raised enough to take care of everything. They invited Chris, this Jehovah's Witness mother who had lost her son, and her his name was Ricky, and they said, you know, Chris, we got all this together. This is the day and night of his, of his service, and it wasn't in a church. And she called the elders and asked them, this is what my son's friends have done for my son. Can I go? And the elder, she told me, the elders told her that if you go to your son's service, you will be disfellowship. And I was just aghast. I couldn't believe that she was told that. So I said, Chris, did you go to Ricky's service? And she said, no. I asked her, she said, I only have one more sentence. I asked right. her why she didn't go, and she said, because I couldn't, and she was crying. Can you imagine that? Okay, go ahead. I, I just, go ahead. Uh, for the, I was listening to this, and just I just want to yell and scream and cuss and cry because of the atrocities of this area. You know, tonight, usually there's something called the memorial, memorial on the memorial, which is to to, to 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 bring knowledge to people that has just been brought up. I mean, Eric has said names of these people that he's known of that have, that have committed suicide because of the yeah. documentation of this organization. And you're talking about the same thing. And what many people don't realize is that if someone commits suicide within this organization, they are not allowed to have a funeral within the congregation, within the team hall. They're not supposed to, okay? So this is a, this, what you just got done saying that I rudely interrupted was, it's true. This is what happens. And then to hear that the elders said she did not go? Oh, that's horrible. Anyways, tonight when I do my show on my channel, they can call in and mention the names of those that you know of 
They have committed suicide. I want a friend that I grew up with in within the congregation. Michael Callan, he committed suicide. There's names out there. And, um, Paul Grundy is trying to collect names of those who have committed suicide. And when I get done with the show tonight, I'm just going to hand it over to him. See if he can, you know, document those in his list or not. I don't know how exactly he's doing it. But, you know, tonight, that will be some more of the morning. Yeah, thank you. Acknowledge that it's suicide because of this. Thank you so much, Linda. Um, I think it's um, kind of scary when I realize it's not just me that knows two people that I grew up with who were not in the same family. They didn't even know each other. But my mom happened to be friends with this sister who had three kids and this other sister over there that had three kids. And we all didn't know each other, but I knew them personally, grew up with them personally. But the thing is, just for one person like you, like me, like Eric, to personally know how many thousands does that turn out to be, Linda, that not only attempted, but actually killed themselves. That is a lot of people. And it is all, all because of Watchtower. All of it. And if anybody doesn't mind, this reminds me of one last one who was the sister of little Ricky that killed himself. Does anybody, you know, care to let me just share one more story? If not, go ahead. This is your show. Well, thank you. You're so kind. Always so kind, Linda. My very best friend when I was a child was named Valerie. Valerie Huggins. It was her little brother, Ricky, who committed suicide, and the mother was told by the elder she couldn't go to his funeral. Valerie and I were so close. We even took baths together. We were always together. When she got older, of course, I had to leave the organization. I couldn't live like that anymore. I tried from talking to Chris, the mother, and she said, no, she doesn't want to talk to you. And one day she did actually let me talk to her. I called her, just took a chance, and she did love to talk, and she ended up talking to me. So I took a chance and asked what had happened to my very dear friend, Valerie. She told me that she had gone on, thank God, to become a paralegal and very, very good, very valuable, got a great job at a great lawyer's office. She made good money. But she was married to a very violent, abusive man. She finally, still in the watchtower, still faithful, and she finally broke away from this abusive man, who was also a witness, got her own apartment, and you know how the game is played. The abusive um, a JW went to the elders and said, you know, basically made it look like it was all her fault. My wife left me, you know, she's come up, you know, going against our marriage vows. Could you please meet with my wife? This is her address. Please tell her that you just want to talk to her, you know, be nice so she'll talk to you. And they said, well, we'll meet with her at this time. And they called back and said, yes, she's agreed to meet with us in her apartment. You know, we'll be there. We'll try to, you know, talk her into her senses. This is what the, the husband wanted. What the elders did not know is he was planning on showing up right there to assert his headship while she was talking to the elders in her new apartment in the living room. He busted in the door, demanded that he speak to her, you're my wife, grabbed her, drug her into the bathroom bedroom, which was on the other side, the wall of the uh other side of the wall of the living room, and those two elders just sat there, figuring there was nothing they could do because it was her house, and he was her husband. And he drug her into the bedroom, shut the door, and they could hear yelling, screaming, slapping, things crashing, her saying stop. Then she started crying. Then she started screaming. Basically, those two elders sitting on the couch heard him yelling at her, beating her, abusing her, and finally raping her. And as this mother, Chris, is on the phone telling me the details, I'm, I, I'm in shock. I'm incredulous. I said, do you mean to tell me 
that those two brothers, hearing everything, knowing what this man is doing, knowing why she left him, that they just sat there and did nothing? They didn't call the police. They didn't call 911. They didn't try to break in the door and, and rescue her. Do you know what her answer was? Well, it was her fault. She wouldn't give him his due. That was how evil. I'm going to say something that may not be very nice, but here it goes. That organization is Satan's excrement. Yeah. I think that that's it perfectly. That organization is Satan's excrement. <clears throat> I, I see that. a better way to put uh, it. Our yeah. government, yeah. Our government needs to sanction that organization and see every dime they stop. I just well, wanted to know what I just wanted to say, Marie. I think I did oh, okay. something, by the way. I think I told you the story once before. Uh, we've had three individuals that lived with us when I was a kid. Now, my dad was not a witness. He left many, many, many years ago. I was a little kid when he left. So he, he was never a witness my whole adult life. Well, my whole life, I should say. And, but we've had three times where uh, we moved individuals into our house to live with us for different reasons. But one of them was this sister um, was married to a non-witness. He was very abusive. He used to beat her and such. And so no one in the congregation, now I'm, a, I'm, I'm not a kid per se, but I'm a younger person. And, but what I did learn is that nobody in the congregation, none of the elders, no one would take her in. And she had nowhere to go. So my father told my mother, well, let her stay here. Well, we found out later the reason is because everybody was afraid that this husband was going to come to figure out where she was and come and cause her to create all kinds of problems. And my father said, you can bring her here if she's got nowhere to go or her kids. And if he comes over here, I'll deal with it. And so I began to realize that these elders are not men. Uh, these are these are basically boys in men's bodies, boys in men's suits, but they're not men. And that's a repetitive thing that I saw all throughout uh, my upbringing as a witness. I can count on one hand the number of actual elders or even ministry of servants for that matter that I was around that were men. That if something happened, they would have stood up and defended their families or defended somebody else and just acted like men. All the rest of them would have been exactly like those guys you just described. Well, here's a, a woman in another room being brutalized and sat and did nothing. Uh, we even had a next door neighbor. She was married to a, uh, a Muslim, a nation of Islam. And she was a doctor. He was nothing. And he would be hurt. And one day my dad happened to be home and he heard all this commotion. And he went and beat the door, almost knocked the door down. And he told the guy if he put his hand on her again, he would kill him. And the guy just packed up his stuff and left. So the point that I'm making is that, that this is what you're doing. And it's not only in this organization. You're hearing all these kinds of stories online where these hosts do whatever. And all the men stand around and nobody does anything. And it, it, it's really amazing in this organization, but they're just not men. Nobody's going to stand up for anything. I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen that. Thank you. Well, I really appreciate that that comment. And you know, and what I felt bad for is not just that my dear friend's mother would actually defend the abusive husband for beating her and raping her. I I, I was blown away. But what hurt me the most is that those brothers sitting there just listening and not knowing what to do, I don't see them as bad guys. I think that they were deeply troubled because their instinct, a man's instinct, a deep instinct, because God made men this way, to, is to defend the woman, defend the child. They were absolutely going against their natural instincts, feeling that they were bound by the rules of the organization. Don't interfere in the marriage. It's none of our business. But you can imagine how deeply troubled they were. 
hoping maybe they were quietly praying. But this is basically the castration of our brothers because of Watchtower. They are not allowed to be men when it comes to doing what is right, when it comes to standing up for someone who is being abused. It is just yep. that way. Anyone want to comment? Don't let me go on. Oh my God. Yeah, I agree. I agree with, I agree with what you're saying, but you know what? At the same token, my whole rule has been my whole life even when I was a witness. I have to live, I have to live with myself. I have to be able yeah. to look in the mirror and live with myself. And that always trumped whatever Watchtower was talking about. It just always trumped it. When I looked at a situation, I just looked at it myself. Okay, I, looked. I was driving home one day. This was a few years ago. I was driving home one day. I got a block from my house waiting at a something. Okay. There was a guy across the street, and it was he, and he was yelling and screaming at some woman. Then he pushed her. And she oh. was pregnant. I mean, like, what, what, we, what we say, big and pregnant. She's probably eight or nine months pregnant. And he pushed her. And I saw that. Oh. And so I pulled my car in the middle of the intersection, and I got out and I said, hey, why are you pushing this pregnant lady? And so he was looking at me, so he starts coming in my direction. So I'm gearing up for a fight. This other girl and his mom, apparently, they come out. And they grabbed him. And so then I realized what was going on. This was some kind of three ring, long circle thing. Both of these are girlfriends. I don't know what craziness was. But I stood right there in the middle of the street. I called the police. I stood right there and I told them, You better not put your hands on her as long as I'm standing here. And then the cops came. I said, Hey, this guy's got this girl. Here's my information. You call me. They'll call me. This so many. So they said, Okay, go ahead and we'll, and we'll take it from here. Now, my point is. I couldn't go home and live with myself. I haven't seen something like that. And that's why I say these people are just not men. If you're either a man or you're not. And if you're not, you know, there's just no excuse for it. That's just, that's just how I feel about it. Thanks, Henry. I want to thank you so much. And, you know, and I've seen it. I have seen where deep down when a man is allowed to just be who he really is and not controlled by some crazy cult, who tells you that you have to be submissive and so on. I have seen it happen. I was almost attacked by a homeless man outside of a convenience store. I was going to go in and he was glaring at me and he said, what are you looking at? And just start yelling at me. And, you know, I was a little bit feisty. I said, well, I'm trying to figure out what I'm looking at. Stupid thing to say. And he was starting to come toward me. And in one breath, some big guy stepped in front of me, never saw him before. He looked like he was a businessman, but he was in a dress shirt, rolled up tie, business black, no jacket. And he was just a really big guy, came out of nowhere, stepped in front of me and challenged a guy, basically said, you better back off or you'll be sorry. And I'm like, whoa. You know, I mean, he protected me, not knowing who I was. He was ready to fight for me. And, and I was thankful for that. But I've seen other men do this. We were watching, um, I don't know, where um, a pelican, the pelican brief, remember, with Julia Roberts, and she's being chased, and they're going to kill her, and she's in the middle of Mardi Gras, and she's running from two men who are trying to kill her, and she runs smack into what looks like the most devious, violent, motorcycle drug dealer type of big guy with tattoos and everything and she accidentally ran smack into him and his eyes glared like he was going to rip her head off and she she had her fearful look on her face and she said help me please help me and in just two seconds he changed his mind grabbed her put her between and he put her behind him and stood up to the guys who were trying to kill him and knock the heck out of him, and then she ran away. But I said, that is the perfect example of even a man who lives his life by deviousness, violence, cruelty, murder. But when push comes to shove, a man's deepest instinct is to protect the child in trouble and to protect the woman in trouble. And it is a wonderful thing to see, but as you said, the ones, the brothers in the organization it is sad to say that they're almost being feminized. Their masculinity, their natural inclination as men to stand up as warriors, to stand up as protectors, is being, is being curtailed. They don't want men to be men. 
they need them to be castrated in order to control them. Am I still on the call? You're still on, Amory. You're all right. Yep. Can you yeah, hello, Amory. Yes, hello. Hi. Uh, yeah. Thank you for taking my call. And nice talking to you again here. This is Ken from Michigan, of course. Uh, yeah, I know yeah. the problems we've had in the past, everybody you know, is when we let the Watchtower Society in. There's two reasons there. I'll get to the other one, and I'll take one at a time here. That we let the Watchtower Society in. We kind of forgot who paid the bills on the place, who paid the taxes, and who was the boss of the place. Pretty soon the Watchtower comes in there humbly, you know, being a guest on a house. Pretty soon they're running the place, and they're running your life and everything like that. Uh, so let that, I, I know the six screens... Former witnesses are not letting that happen. They're waking up to the facts. But we got to put the word out that you don't want to ever let you let any, don't, don't, don't let yourself ever do that to anybody. You just remember who owns the place and who's the boss and everything like that. And who runs their own life. And that's you. Second reason that we're in such deep problems in there like that is our unconstitutional socialist government that we got here won't enforce the laws that's on the books, you know, that protects our freedom of religion, right, that protects us against uh, things like shunning and everything like that. It won't enforce the laws and so forth. It's just like uh, you hear on, on the news all the time about the illegal immigration. We need new laws. No, we don't. You need to enforce the laws that's on the books right now that you're not doing. And just like what this uh, problems with the Watchtower Society, they need to enforce the laws that's on the books, you know, to protect our freedom of religion and freedom of conscience and everything that the Watchtower Society has been violating up the yin yang for all these years. Right. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah like, like I was saying earlier, I don't know if anybody called it, I think the U.S. government needs to sanction the Watchtower religion and, uh, and, and seize every dime they've got, or at least keep it the way they can't use their money so they can at least release the, the CSA files that they have. Because, as you all know, from what I've heard, of course, everybody knows this already, that, you know, one charge paid like $2 million to, I think it was to California, wherever it was, for the CSA case that we were going on. But, and they still didn't turn over the files. So I think if the U.S. government would have really crack down and sanction that organization for to hand over their documents, it would be a lot better. Yeah, exactly. We like to see the government crack down on them. And just like I said earlier, start enforcing the laws that uh, protect us yeah. and everything like that, but they won't do it. Yeah, we've been advocating that on six screen since Jump Street. And so have I and everything like that, because I come on as a constitutionalist, and I'm strong constitutionalist and strong freedom of religion. I mean, you practice your religion any way you want to, as long as you don't hurt somebody else. Okay, I'd like to take the time to invite anyone who maybe has another thought, a question, an experience to share. Go ahead. Is this me? Any of Oh, hold on, we're good to we're gonna go, ahead, go, yeah. hold on one second, Donald. We get some more calls. Let's go to 717. Go ahead, 717. You're on with us. Okay. Thank you, Ray. I'm like to prefer to protect my identity, but I love what I'm hearing and thank you for sharing so much. Aw. What's on your mind, dear? I'm what I was hearing about the Constitution, you're you're so right about so much. Yeah. And I think that everything, this organization, I think it's run by, like, the Afghanistan Taliban. Uh-oh. I, 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 that's what I'd like, the thing that I was wanting to share. And about oh, I... right. Yeah. 
we all need to take a good look at ourselves and how we treat one another and how we think about how we treat one another. And all we can do is do the right thing for ourselves toward others. You know, we can see the wrong that's going on, but the most we can do is set a good example. And I'm so glad. Where are you calling from, dear? North Carolina. Well, hello from North Carolina. I'm very glad you called in. Would you like to add something else? I'd like to add that the that you're right that to look in the Bible and to follow scripture and not traditions of men. Good point. Good point. Doesn't Thessalonians first uh, Thessalonians five twenty one admonish us to make sure of all things? It's in their own Bible. They never seem to, they never seem to do it. And just that, just wanted to share, how, I, I know that I've been listening to it, and I love hearing from you, Anne-Marie, and from, from Rick and Susan. Well, we love hearing from you, too, as well. Is there anything else you wanted to add, dear? And with all those enforcements, I'm sorry to hear about this family thing. It's sad. Yes, it is very sad. It is, it is very sad. And, and, but luckily, we have the secular laws to protect because otherwise it could go far. Oh, most definitely. It, it could be like Sharia law, and they would even have honor killings and stoning. If you ever heard. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's definitely the way to watch our Yeah, if they wanted, I if they could get away with it. I could only kill their own children and it's for shaming the honor. Why not? I, I mean, they seem to have, they seem to have no boundary that they are not willing to cross if they can get away with it. And that's not Christ-like, and it's not like it's fine, and all I want is to be able to have a relationship with Jesus Christ and his Father. Yes, absolutely. Keep it simple, isn't it? It sure does take courage to be able to come out of that sick, disgusting cult. And to just really realize God only ever had one plan of salvation, and it's very clearly made out of the scriptures. I think and courage. The ones that we have, that so many we love, and my heart goes out to yeah. so many better. Oh, I know it must not be easy for you, brother. I feel like my. When my father was gone, and I feel like he had been taking a bandage off. Oh, what did they do? And, and, and I've been, and but thank God I've been for a few years. I think it was some time. I knew some things weren't right, and knew that Jesus Christ was Jesus. That was His name in heaven and on earth. Yeah. What was your father? Oh, you You got. Sounds like you got other calls coming in. Okay, if you don't want to discuss it, don't work about it. We would just get you to have them to express. You know more. If there is no worries. And just want to say that I love you, Anne, Marie, Rick, Susan, Eric, and Dick, and Tony, and and yeah. Desiree. Yeah, Desiree's a sweetheart, and Stefan, and Ken, and there's so many wonderful 
wonderful uh, members of our six green family and you as well. And would you like, did you ever hear about that one family with the children? Me? The children what, dear? The Brittany Marilla? The Brittany and I, Secret? Marilla? No, I, I do and not know of that. Hopefully they'll come on here and speak with you and Rick. Oh, they would be welcome. They would be welcome. And, and to take one, I go, but I have, I do have multiple identities as a protective measure. Many do, brother. You just have to do what feels best for you. Okay. Is there anything else you wanted to, go ahead. Is there anything else you wanted to add? I think that'll be good unless I come up with something else. Well, then you just pipe up and say what you need to say. Is there anyone else who would like to add? Hello? Yeah, Emery. Go ahead. Hi. Hi. Go ahead. Hi, Emery. It's come since I'm a little bit uh, froggy today. I apologize. I've been sick the last few days, but I just wanted to say oh. Yeah. And I oh. want to say I'm in North Carolina. <laughs> we're here. We're here. Oh. Together, so we're neighbors. It's, it's wonderful to always hear new people chiming in on the show. So, you know, Henry, you do a wonderful job. You, you show so much love and compassion to other people. I think that's just so beautiful. You have a wonderful gift. Thank oh, you. Oh, bless your heart. Well, so are you. So are you, my sister. So you. are you. Well, listen, I just wanted to say a couple more things before it's too late about courage. Um, there are only, when it comes to courage and it comes to being in the watchtower, out of the watchtower, however you live your life, there are only two paths for you to follow. One is your own path to follow. And the other path is the one set out for you by others for you to follow. We all know that Watchtower basically has one Watchtower script within which every Watchtower should acquaint themselves and strive to be just like they are ordered to be in the Watchtower script. I call them a perfectly indoctrinated program watchtower drone. All the same, look the same, act the same, believe the same, dress the same, all the all smell the same, they talk the same, they have the same intonation and the things they say, they spout the same watchtower rhetoric. It's a scary thing to see if you have a normal brain. Every new beginning, trying to work your way out of watchtower, trying to start your life outside of Watchtower, every new beginning starts with a single step. Even if it's a little tiny baby step, what would you say was your first step out of the Watchtower? That's my question to the entire listening audience. To please, because I'm curious, what was your first baby step out of the watchtower. Maybe you just took a big step and a big bound and you were out of there. Or maybe it was a little, very delicate, trepidous step. Anybody want to share what their first step out of watchtower was, Darcy? Hey, hey Anne-Marie. Yeah. Anne -Marie? I think for me, Hi. the biggest first step was just giving myself permission to read anything learn anything that I wanted and not be bound by watch our rules. And then I think from there it went to I won't or will not do a thing or do a thing if the Bible says don't do it or that or doesn't comment on it. And not rather watch how ways in it at all. And then I began to ask myself, how did I get into this cult in the first time? You know, why didn't I see that this was a cult all along. You can go online and you'll hear stories of teenagers who figured this out. 
scared to know I need to figure this out. Why did it take me so long? So it was that kind of thing. So being, allowing myself to read anything that I want, no longer being bound by any rules from Watchtower and, and, and making my own decisions based on that. Thank you. Hey, Emery. I don't know what's going on with the phone right here, but a bunch of bonk, bonk, bonk. Are you on there, Emery? Yep. Hey, Rick. Uh, hello, Larry. I don't know if Emery dropped off. She was having some trouble with her phone. But, uh, yeah, whoever's doing that, uh, don't keep people on the phone. Just uh, leave, leave the button alone. That won't happen. So, what's up, Larry? Hey, I think it was deliberately. I was going to answer Anne Marie's question. What um, what step did I take to get out? Um, ho hopefully, she'll come back soon. But the the step that I took to get out of the watchtower was trying to get back in. Um, oh you know, God! I, had, <laughs> I was inactive for thirteen years. Many people know my story, but I was inactive for thirteen years, and finally they convinced me to come back. And as soon as I did, uh, I got strong enough to confess, and because I confessed, they kicked me out. And I still, oh, God. <laughs> and I still tried to get back in for three and a half years. Um, they still did not show mercy, did not show Christian love. Um, and so after about two years, um, I started coming on the six screens, and I already knew it was a, a cult. But what really convinced me is when somebody on the six screens told me, that the Watchtower teaches that Jesus Christ is not our mediator. And I, even though I knew they were a cult, I still couldn't believe that until they told me where it was, and I read it for myself, that the Watchtower teaches that Jesus Christ is the mediator only for anointed Christians. And so, of course, that means in their language, only people who are going to heaven in their, in their religion which is less than 1%. So 99% of Jehovah's Witnesses do not have Jesus Christ as their mediator, even if they don't know it. That's their organization's teaching and dogma. So when I heard that, I was completely out forever. Yay! What was your name again? I missed that part. I'm, I really know you. Yeah. I, you know what you found? Larry sounds different. I'm thinking it sounds like him, but it doesn't sound like him. <laughs> I'm so happy you got out. But you know what, Larry? It always seems that those who get out and then get pulled back in end up twice as bad. They turn into crazy Jehovah's Witnesses. I was one of them, and a good friend of mine that I was very close to had gotten out. She went back to the organization. She turned into a crazy lady just like I did. Crazy. Uh. <laughs> I'm glad you got well, out. I'm so glad. Hopefully I, didn't, hopefully I didn't become crazy. Actually, I've become more level-headed and balanced. And, you know, we were, of course, following what the Watchtower said, as you, you mentioned earlier. And they were forever changing their, their teachings. And there was a couple of things that I knew were not true, like when they were saying that... Uh, People who died and was resurrected, they would never be able to m marry. I knew that was wrong. Um, they twisted what the scriptures said about that. And uh, there was a couple other things. There was a couple other things that I knew was wrong. But of course, we were always taught to wait on Jehovah. So <laughs> even though I knew that things were wrong, at, at, you know, early on, I still thought, well, Jehovah's going to straighten them up, but. <laughs> <laughs> God has no Jehovah. Yeah. Well, no, he does not. Real name, but you know. So, it, God has the true God has nothing to do with their organization. Exactly. Um, please excuse me, Larry. I need to check with our dear brother. We've gone almost an hour over time. I need to check with our brother Rick how we're you know 
what he's got to say about that. My brother Rick, are you there? Uh, yes, I am, Anne Marie. Yeah, let's go. We got a lot of people. Like I said to you today, uh, there'd be a lot of people coming in with the colder weather. Uh, people are listening to the six greens, so we have unusual traffic. Why don't you keep the program going for another ten minutes, and then we'll cut to the news, okay? Okay. Thank you so much, my brother. I will do that. One moment. Okay, 38. Okay, just before I forget, I just wanted to share my one last thought that I'm very excited about. I've been on Reddit, and the news on Reddit is that they, several people post. Well, I guess we lost Anne Marie again. Her phone has been giving us trouble here all day long. She, she comes in, drops off. Uh, we'll see if she'd like to come back in. Uh, I do see that, Susan, did you want to make a comment? I see you in the queue here. Would you like to say something, Susan? If not, don't. Uh, yeah. All right. I guess she just can was. Can uh, Yeah, we can hear you. Yep. Yeah. Oh, hi. Well, you were talking about, um, you know, having certain kinds of attitudes. And sometimes, you know, when we leave, the West Church, some people can seem a little braver and have more, you know, more bravado than, than we do. But that doesn't mean that we're not being brave, that we're not standing out, we're not standing up for ourselves and against the West Church. And it just takes time for that, that bravado to grow. As an example, some people leave the Watch Tower and they go right out and they begin protesting at a kingdom hall. And some people, it may, they may never be able to have the courage to do that, but they support people who do. So that's a good thing. So it all depends on the person. And we shouldn't feel guilty that we're not up to par, you know, just as some people seem braver than we are. We should just really do what we can do and uh, encourage others to do the best that they can do. Excellent. Well, thank you, Susan, for that. Uh, Anne Marie, you back on with us? I don't think Anne Marie is. Uh, yes, yeah, she's been having trouble with the phone, so we'll just kind of wrap it up from here, I guess. We'll give her just another minute or two to come on. <clears throat> but we got the news coming up next JW World News. That's the news the Watchtower doesn't want us talking about. But we talk about it every Saturday night and every other Sunday. Uh, so we're looking forward to uh, tomorrow. We're going to be protesting at the Kingdom Hall here in Wilmington, Massachusetts. We'll talk a little bit more about that on the other side of the news. But if anybody out there in the uh, New England area uh, would like to come and be with us, we're, at, uh, we're in Wilmington, Massachusetts, One Bridge Lane. If anybody out there would like to come and join us, we do have stragglers from time to time. Uh, we had a man come up from New Jersey a couple of years ago. So just saying that you're all invited. If anyone wants to come and protest tomorrow night at the memorial, it's going to be quite the quite the event. So it's going to be live. We'll have it live on, on this channel as well as Facebook channels. Well, I, I'm going to have to wrap it up here, I guess. So well, Anne-Marie, there she is. Anne-Marie, you want to come in with your closing comments? I'm so sorry. I don't know what you guys got. But did you guys hear the Reddit news? Uh, we didn't hear. We were anxiously waiting for it, and you dropped off, and let's hear the news. I had no idea it dropped off. I don't get any kind of bells or anything. I uh, saw on Reddit several people posted on the XJW subreddit that there are now 98,000 members on the XJW subreddit site. Now, of course, we have to understand that many of these might be due to some members having multiple accounts, but it's still a huge number. And one member stated that when they joined the subreddit for ex Jehovah's Witnesses in 2016, there were only 6,000 members on this subreddit site for ex Jehovah's Witnesses. At this time, we can see a growth of approximately 92,000 ex-Jehovah's Witnesses joining the ex-Jehovah's Witness subreddit site in mm -hmm. only the last seven years. Well, that's remarkable. Did we get that? Yeah, no, we, we did get it. Yeah, that's very remarkable. In fact, I've, I've seen that too, Anne-Marie. I was on uh, Reddit when there was 9,000 members. 
And uh, right now, like you say, there's 98,000. So what, what does that tell you, Anne-Marie? Well, it tells me that all the things we keep hearing you say every week, they're hemorrhaging, they're losing, they're, you know, and it's true. Why else would they be selling off almost 5,000 kingdom halls and closing down all the branches and, and uh, all the assemblies they were supposed to have? How many did they cancel in 2020, 21? They just canceled district assemblies. They close down all these kingdom halls and they take a lot of the congregation has simply been dissolved, not counting the ones they merge. Isn't that insane? Somebody yeah. wrote me yesterday, they don't even have two days circuit assemblies anymore. I'm like, what? Well, times are changing, as they would say, Emory. Well, Emory had a good program tonight, it was very good. Uh, we certainly appreciate your presence. Uh, we have a lot of new ones coming in here as well, so that's always a good thing. And the forums are good. We love to, you know, read articles on Reddit and JWN, and we love it here too when people speak up and talk, and we can actually hear their voice inflection. We can hear their emotions. So it really is great to be able to do that. And uh, we we love the format. We love the people want to come in and speak. We had some new ones coming in tonight. We want to thank you guys for doing that. All right, Anne-Marie, you did a good job. You get a gold star. You get a good star. I want to thank Donald, Stephen, Linda, Ken, Eric, Larry, John Blaine, and all others that I forgot. Thank you so much, my brother, and happy anniversary to you and your beautiful wife. Thank you, Anne-Marie. You keep waving that flag of victory. Well, that's Anne-Marie. She's out there in California. Friends, we're going to go to JW World News coming up next. Don't go anywhere. We're on the same YouTube channel. We're also on a number of Facebook channels as well, as well as Twitter. So thank you very much for coming in. I want to thank all of those two for speaking up tonight right here on the Six Screens Telenetwork. I'm going to end this stream here. All right, let's end the stream.